What's up guys, in this episode I want to show you how to tile over tile. Yes, you heard me right, I'm going to show you how to tile over tile in a shower floor. As you can see, we had some slate tiles here and the color is not that great. The silicone around the shower has failed. So I decided to change the look of it to this. Let me show you how I did it. I got myself a nice utility knife and I started cutting through the silicone on the corners and the bottom part of the shower. And then I got this corner tool to remove as much silicone as I can. I got my shop vac and vacuumed the entire shower floor. After that, I got some denatured alcohol and washed up the entire shower floor twice, just to ensure there's no grease or any kind of a grime on the floor. I removed the drain cover and stuffed some rags inside it so my tools and stuff that I use are not falling inside it. So now the floors are completely nice and clean and it's time to apply my bonding primer. This is the bonding primer that I got from Lowe's. It's a good quality material. I used it many times in the past. Using this product is the trick to install tile over tile. But keep in mind the surface must be completely clean. As you saw here, I used some denatured alcohol. I washed down the whole surface before applying this. When this primer dries up and you touch it, it has a texture to it. You kind of feel like you're touching sandpaper. There's some kind of a sand-like material inside it. And those material normally sit down on the very bottom of the container. So you gotta make sure you mix this stuff for a good three to four minutes before applying it. As far as the application, I normally apply at least two coats of it to ensure I have the maximum bonding between these tiles and the tiles that I'm gonna be installing on the top. I normally wait about an hour in between the coats and when my second coat is done, I leave it overnight before I install my tiles over top of it. I like to remove my tape as soon as my second coat is done. This way it's not gonna stick to the primer when it dries up. This is a 3 inch ABS pipe coupling. I'm gonna cut a portion of this to the same exact thickness of my tiles and then I'm gonna use it as a spacer for my drain. I installed this on a 3 inch ABS pipe and then I cut it with my miter saw. I made sure I go very slow so I get a very nice and precise cut. I'm gonna be gluing this spacer on top of my drain. This way the drain is gonna be built up a little bit. So when I install the new tiles, everything looks nice and flush. So in order to get the best adhesion between these two pieces, I have to sand down these edges. When the surfaces are rough, the glue is gonna work better and it's gonna adhere them a lot better together. I do the same thing to the drain. I'm gonna remove all those debris and imperfections or primer pieces from it. And then I'm gonna sand down the entire surface and then clean it up with some alcohol before applying my glue. This is the same spacer piece that I just cut previously. I'm gonna put it on top of this drain just like so. 
As you can see the screw holes are completely clear. I like to use some alcohol to clean up both pieces before applying my glue to it. In order to attach these two pieces together, I'm gonna be using this marine graded epoxy. This stuff is pretty cool, it's designed for wet and damp areas and it gives you an excellent adhesion between the two pieces of plastic. It's a two part epoxy and it needs to be mixed up for a good one minute before applying it. As you can see, I decided to put a very good liberal amount of this on top of this drain. I also added some of this on the bottom of that spacer ring that I just made. Then I put these two pieces together. I cleaned up all that access stuff from the inside. I had some extra epoxy, so I decided to fill all that area around it for maximum adhesion. I'm satisfied with the location of this spacer that I just put in. Before I put the drain cap on top, I got myself some longer stainless steel screws from Home Depot. I put the grill back on top and then tighten up the screws, not all the way in, just enough to hold that plastic piece in place. I didn't want to tighten it too much because it could squeeze all that glue out. I let it sit for about five hours. When I came back to it, the two pieces of plastic was completely welded together. This marine graded epoxy is pretty good for welding ABS or any type of plastic together. The epoxy dried up and it's pretty shiny so I decided to sand it down a little bit so when I'm putting the thin set it's gonna adhere to this also pretty good. Then I put a new drain cover on top and tightened up the screws all the way in this. Now there's many different types of drains available I'm not too sure what type of a shower drain you have but if you go to the hardware stores you're gonna find these at the plumbing section. They normally come in a square and round shape. I just want to show you how to do this if you have a square one or a different shape. So take a picture of your drain and go buy the same exact type that you need. When you bring it home, put it on a piece of pipe, whatever size that you need basically, and make sure it sits there nice and tight. Then double check the thickness of your tile. You gotta be cutting it exactly the same thickness as your tile. I'm gonna place some blocks of wood on the side of my miter saw and then I place this pipe on top of it and then I cut this drain to the same thickness that I need. Now you have the same shape of drain, you can actually glue it down the same way that I showed you here. Just keep in mind you have to sand it down before actually gluing it. And one other tip, when you're cutting this piece of plastic, be extra gentle with it, you gotta go super slow to get a very nice and clean cut. The slope was pretty good in this shower, we had no issues with the drainage of the water. And also the builder used a Schluter waterproofing system right underneath of those previous tiles. So we have no water drainage or leaking issues whatsoever. If you have water leakage downstairs, that's a whole different procedure you have to replace or fix the entire shower pan. So this procedure that I'm showing here is just good enough if you don't like the style or the look of the tiles that you already have in your shower. I picked these stone tiles for this shower and as you can see they go on together like a puzzle. I cut them to the shapes and the sizes that I need and then I transfer these right next to the shower in the same exact shape. So when I have my tin set ready I know exactly where every piece is gonna go. I'm gonna show you how I put them on the side of the shower in a few seconds. And then I vacuum up the entire shower floor just to make sure there's no debris sitting on top of it. As far as the tin set types, we have non-modified or sometimes it's called the standard tin set which are basic. We also have modified tin sets that have more bonding polymers added to them. I always go with the modified type because they don't crack and you get the maximum adhesion from them. They also come in gray and white colors. Because my tiles are lighter color, I'm gonna go with the white type. 
Mixing is pretty simple. I normally mix them up for a good like four minutes and then I let it sit down for about two minutes and then I mix it up another two, three minutes and it's ready to go. As far as the consistency, you wanna go with something like peanut butter here. As you can see here, I stacked up all my tiles right next to the shower so I know exactly where every piece is gonna go after I apply my tin set. Before applying my tin set, I clean up the shower floor with some water so that my tin set applies a slightly easier and that little bit of water also helps with the adhesion. I used a quarter inch notch trowel to apply a very nice coat of the tin set. And then I installed my tiles on top of it. Keep in mind I'm just putting these tiles loose in place, I'm not going to push them down right away, I'm just going to wait until I can adjust them. Once I'm happy with the exact location of them, then I'm going to push them down. After adjusting my tiles, I used my grout float to push all these tiles down right into the tin set. The next day when I came back to it, I noticed there was some areas that had a little bit of the tin set squeezed through the tiles. So I got myself a knife and I removed them as much as I could. Then I used my vacuum to vacuum up all these debris before I actually apply my grout. I highly recommend you to use some kind of a grout additive when you're mixing your grout, especially for an area like a shower. You can just mix your grout with this instead of water. So this stuff is gonna prevent that color change on your grout after some time. If you have big grout lines that needs to be filled, you have to use sanded grout. For that reason, I'm gonna be using sanded grout here. And the additive that I got was also for sanded grout. So also as far as the mixture, you wanna mix it pretty well for a good three to four minutes. Let it sit down for a couple of minutes and then mix it again for another minute. As far as the thickness, you wanna get something like peanut butter again. One more time before applying my grout, I'm gonna clean up the surface of my tiles. This way when I apply the grout, it's gonna actually slide a slightly easier and smoother on top of these tiles. I like to use my float to apply this grout to the whole surface. It's fairly easy, all you need to do is to push it inside these seams from different angles just to cover up this whole area and get all those seams filled up. I highly recommend using gloves every time you touch grout. If you don't use it, your hands are gonna get dried up pretty bad for the next few days, which is not a very pleasant feeling.
This process doesn't take that long. As soon as this process is done, I'm gonna get myself a few damp sponges and go over the surface of the tiles just to remove that extra excess uh, grout that is sitting on top of these tiles. If you don't clean them up immediately, there's gonna be a very ugly haze that is gonna form on top of these tiles. When you're cleaning these tiles with your sponge, you gotta be extra careful. You gotta go very lightly over them. You don't wanna remove the actual grout. I let the grout to set about 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, I come back with a clean bucket of water and a new sponge. I go over all these surfaces and remove all that fine haze that is formed on the top of these tiles. This is gonna be my final cleanup. It's pretty important to wash off that sponge more often to get a very nice and clean result. The next day when everything was completely dried up, I came back with some dry shop towels and cleaned up the whole surface of the tiles. And then I removed that towel that I left inside that drain. And then I used my shop towel one more time to clean up all these surfaces before I apply my sealer. Because I used natural stone tiles here and the natural stone is gonna be pretty porous, I decided to seal all these surfaces. So I got myself some good quality grout and tile sealer. This sealer is liquid, it almost looks like water when you apply it. I got myself a brush and I applied two coats of this. I waited about two hours in between the coats. Once this was completely dried up, I got myself some 100% silicone and I applied it to all those corners as well. Due to the expansion and contraction, the house settling, seasonal movements, these walls are gonna have a little bit of movement and the number one place that is gonna crack up is gonna be these corners. So in order to prevent any water leakage in the future, I like to apply a bead of silicone on all these corners first, and then I like to spray some soapy water on top of it and clean up all the excess with my finger. The key thing is to make sure you apply this bead of silicone first, and then spray it with the soapy water. If you have a slight amount of soapy water underneath of it, it's not gonna stick, it's gonna fail. There you have it guys, the shower is done and it's ready to use. If you like this video or if you found this video helpful, please make sure you hit that like button. If you have any questions, please make sure you write a comment so I can get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing it. I have a lot of cool videos coming very soon. And more than anything, thank you very much for giving me your time and watching this video. All the best, till next time, peace.